Love a good DIY? For today's special episode of Homeworthy, we're bringing you six of our favorite renovation projects handpicked by our editors. From a once derelict cottage in Connecticut to a fabulous kitchen redesign in Texas, these tastemakers surely have a knack for bringing their visions to life. Enjoy these incredible transformations. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Tina. Welcome to our Rockport, Maine home. Come on in, I'll show you around. This house was built actually in the 80s and we bought it about 12 years ago and it was very different than what you're gonna see today. It was owned by a couple who had uh, quite different tastes than we do. Uh, it was pretty gaudy. It was so fugly that nobody bought it. And when we looked at it, we realized that this was just a view with a house attached to it. And we had to make uh, enormous space for it to, so you could see they had small windows covered with curtains and the view is what you're gonna love about this house. We started with seven acres. We bought the house and, and they had a guest cottage, which you'll see, which was unfinished. Uh, they had done the stonework, and if you did that stonework, that would have been a million dollars in itself. Uh, the house stood on the market for I don't know how many years because it was so gaudy. No one could see past it. So we bought this property, and then we had a neighbor who had this fabulous little Frank Lloyd Wright design house. By saying design means it was built after he died, but it's his design. And it's so close to the water, you could never build anything like that again. So we bought it and turned it into a dining hall. Then my husband decided he needed a barn for the little tractor that he has. That got way out of hand. It's three levels and you could fit 12 Suburbans in the bottom. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, six Suburbans, not 12. Uh, you could put others in the other part. And we built an apartment on top of it, which is so adorable. That was so fun to do. That was a great project and a big garden, a vegetable garden there, because we, we needed that. Uh, then there was one property left uh, that was between our two properties. So when our neighbor decided to sell, she sold it to us. And now we have 23 acres and we have five houses on the property and it's become a family compound. This is a foyer. This is where people enter the house and they see my two famous Jamie's picture, Jamie Wyatt pieces that came from the Deadly Sins collection, which I absolutely love. This is what I get to wake up and see every day. I just love it. This living room was so different when we bought this house. This was all wall with a little bitty porch on the end that you, we never sat on. And it had these small windows. This was a part of the house I just could not understand people. So we blew it out, put a big porch out here, put the fireplace in, found this piece of granite, added that small window and just changed it completely. It was the ugliest room in the house and now it's my favorite. This skull in here, that's my ex-husband to remind my current husband what I'm capable of. <laughs> you have to come outside just to really appreciate, but we have this long porch that you can have great cocktail parties and I love to, I, that's my little herb garden because I cook and I love to cook. It's, it's great fun. You just go out in the garden, pick some vegetables, come up and cook them and get some fresh seafood. But this is our view. Tell me about this house over here. Ah, that's our friend Angus. Angus was sitting on this very porch one Saturday and he said, I need to get out of here. I need to get out of Alabama. It's too hot. I need a place. And I turned him around and said, that 116 acres is for sale. The bank has it and it's the deal of the century. And he bought it the next morning. So now I got Angus who I've known for 40 years and Joe and I've been friends with forever. So it's great to have him as my next door neighbor. Stucco. Yeah, you don't see that in Maine very often. A as Joe said, the people that built this house had more money than sense. They just did all kind of different things that we've been able to turn into more of a comfortable home. It had, it was bizarre when we bought it. There was a solar system that I'm sure 20 years ago was the state of the art that was in here that was built in the side and had black rocks and went up. 
we took all of it out. It wasn't functional anymore, and we took all of it out and just made it a, a comfortable, simpler, much simpler house. Do you sit here a lot? When I'm reading, like I just sit here and chill. I mean, just sit here and look at it from my view. It's just, it's just so incredible, and the breeze comes through, and there's not that many bugs in Maine, you know. It's pretty good here because we're on the water, and the breeze goes through, so we don't have many bugs. So I just, I just sit here and pretend I'm somebody. <laughs> Tina, you are somebody. <laughs> A legend in my own mind. <laughs> so we bought it and we painted it because it was dark like lots of that stuff was. And the people that owned it were from... New York, and they hadn't been here in 10 years. They didn't even have a kitchen. So we added a little kitchen and we took some restoration hardware tables, put them together, bought some chairs, built the little benches. We have actually seated 50 people for a wine dinner here to benefit the hospital. We have these little tables that come here. And the fun thing about those dinners is when you get here, you have a bowl, which I'm going to show you, of rocks. And you have to pick a rock. And the rock has a number on it, okay? And each seat has a number. So you don't know who you're going to sit next to. And it makes dinner parties so much more fun because you may have somebody stuffy around somebody really fun and you can't sit by your spouse. And we turned this part of it, which was just a porch, into a cute little bar. Well, I don't know how cute it is, but it's functional. And it's a bar and everybody congregates in here and comes and we mix drinks and see, I gotta have my pink peppercorns everywhere because I use that in the gin and tonics. And we have storage under here in the bench and enclose this as part of the house. So when we bought this place, we thought, we're gonna use it for parties. We're gonna have dinners. So we decided to put a fireplace and we really wanted a pizza oven. So we told the fireplace guy, the stone worker, could you just put a pizza oven in the back of it and you have heat? So he did, it's not huge. I'm scared to open it. Uh, it's not huge, but it, you know, you can make your pizzas in here. And, and I always put a roast at night because you got that heat. You don't ever want to waste your heat in a pizza oven. And then we have one of those Brazilian grills where you turn the handle. But I guess the most important thing we need to look at is my husband's boat. He loves the boat. So we're going to walk down and take a look. Here we are at the boat, my husband's favorite part. He loves his boat. Have you ever seen a dog when they're in a car and they're sticking their head out with their tongue? That's how he is driving that boat. It's his happy place. This is our property called the tree house. It's the last piece of property that we bought and I'm gonna take you inside. But before I do, I wanna tell you about these crazy sculpture pieces. Rockport Steel is who I work with to do my sculpture and I was walking around and saw this scrap on the ground and that's it. I painted them, turned them upside down and made them into sculpture. And that's a piece of driftwood that was on the property. Welcome to the tree house. The tree house was the last piece that we bought. We didn't do very much to it except paint and of course furnish it. That's another Brian White piece. Boy, I have a lot of his stuff. And that's another Bo Bartlett, which I just love. This is a table that we had in Houston that we refinished and had done. I'm also gonna show you something that I found at the Ham Museum in Los Angeles that I could not resist buying three of them. They're made by Herman Miller. And, ah, and when you're drinking, it's really fun. <laughs> See why we call it the tree house? They kind of look like pieces of art. I mean, they can sit, you know, up and they, they were all lined up at the Hammer Museum. They must have had 12 of them. And then I saw these kids jump on them and start playing with them. And I just thought, oh my God, I have to have them. They're just so much fun. So when we lived on the island, 
I commissioned a portrait of the island and I got my husband's boat. You think there was a sidebar in there? I mean, yes, that's the house, but the boat is what he did the painting of. These are Rosa Rugosas, very common in Maine. They're sea roses because they can take the elements, but a lot of people don't know that when they're finished, that these are full of vitamin C. It's rose hips. You just crunch, dry them out. I, I put them like a big tray on a cookie sheet in the oven for, I turn the oven on 200 when it gets to two, and put them in. When it gets to 200, I turn the oven off and leave them in there till they're dry. And then I take them and crunch them up and make tea with them. It's still, they're delicious. I mix it with mint, I mix it with lemon balm. A lot of stuff that I grow, I make so many different teas and rose petals as well. Makes great tea, it gives it great flavor. It's really fun. They, they were roses. This is a secondary market. At one point they were <laughs> Yeah, rose. yeah, like this rose, where did we just see some? See what this rose is? And these are the old kind that um, smell good, but this is what a Rosa Rugosa, I mean, this is the end of it. It's not super pretty, but that's what it looks like. And then it turns to this, they dry up. This and then to the dry part. So you could just pick the dry ones and make tea full of vitamin C, chock full. So this is the guest cottage and I saved showing it to you for last because it might be my favorite, but I have to tell you, different people that stay here choose different houses. It's so bizarre. Everybody has different tastes of what they like. Come and have a look. We have our zinnias. Are these just fabulous? I love them. I use them for cut flowers. And in the other pots, I decided to make a little herb garden here for somebody that's staying here. Just some mint and some basil and rosemary and parsley. And of course I have to have pineapple sage on everything. Welcome to the guest cottage. This place we bought with the original house and it was not complete. The stone, well, the stone work was done, which would have cost us a fortune. And the inside was a total shell. So we got to do exactly what we wanted. I wanted to make it look somewhat like a ship, you know, kind of the feel of the water. And so we did, it's got two bedrooms and it is where a lot of people like to stay because it's really cute. And it's just super comfortable. We did the kitchen with drawers so you wouldn't have all of your appliances up. And of course it's got its own little bar like every other house. This is Joe's contribution to the guest cottage. He cannot stand to have a television showing. So this is called Reversica. And he had this put in here, which I think is so cute. He can't tell it's a TV. So this is the second bedroom. There's two bedrooms in this house. We went to auction and bought this in Thomaston, Maine. And I just wanted to make it feel really serene. This little area here has fabulous views and you could just sit here and read a book and hang out. I mean, it's just super comfortable. This is the master guest room of the guest house. And we have twin granddaughters. They're 17 now, but when they were little, we got chair and a halfs that pull out to single beds. So their parents could stay in this room and they could stay in the room too. It's just, it's just comfortable. It's just a fun, comfortable kind of place. So my husband started playing golf in the last few years and this was a regulation croquet court, which we used, but it was really hard to take care of. So I called this golf company to surprise him, I got this with this view. We have a trail that goes up to the main house, which is uh, like a goat trail. There's a bench in the middle for a reason, because it is not easy to climb. But I mean, what kind of putt-putt range do you have with this kind of view? Of course, Texas flags on the holes. I'm happy where I'm planted. Wherever I am is where my family is and that's where I'm happy. And I try to make it comfortable for everyone. I love to cook. Uh, I cook a lot when I'm here. We eat a lot of meals at home and we have friends come over and we have 
We, we're out on this patio so much. It's just so much fun to be here. There's so many, and everything's organic on the property. The food is fabulous in Maine. We live in, we live five minutes from three James Beard restaurants. We live within 10 minutes, you have the airport and the snow bowl in the winter. And of course, five minutes from three golf courses, which makes it really special. Heading into the sunroom, the doors stick a little old house stuff, but here we go. So this is the sunroom. It was actually an addition that the previous owners added to the house. Um, we're not entirely sure when, but it's not from 1927 like the rest of the home. Uh, at one point, we actually seriously considered ripping it out um, to make sure that the home was all that old 1927 charm. Um, a lot of these pieces are newer, a lot of the materials are newer. However, in the pandemic, we saw things differently and decided to weekend warrior this project. Um, so we changed our mind, decided we're not gonna rip it out, we're gonna make it another room, and I'm so glad we did because it is my second favorite room in the house. I'll still say the living room's tops, um, but this room I spend all my summers, all my weekends in the summer in. Um, my animals and I curl up on this day bed nearly every weekend. Um, and I will, you know, flip through design magazines, um, read, watch shows, but this is a great comfy spot and it's actually a twin mattress. So if we have guests, they can technically sleep out here comfortably. Um, I've definitely fallen asleep out here a few times, but I've got some pieces for that setup. So we've got a candle and, um, a great table that I can like bring snacks or wine out here. Um, we've got uh, a couple other tables for more snacks and more wine, but this table in particular is a really cool old limestone letterpress table. Um, it's covered up by magazines most of the time, but it's a really fun vintage piece that we collected. Um, this dresser is really great because it's a nice size and holds a lot of spare candles, yoga mats. I'll do yoga out here. Um, this room also has some like spillover favorite art pieces that I got after the gallery wall was created. I don't really add to that wall much anymore, but these are from Blakely Little. Um, and she's an artist in South Carolina that I really, really love. This is a print of hers and then that's an original, um, but I love her hand. I love her use of color. She's quirky, whimsical, and so fun. The piece above the daybed is Gray Malin, um, and I was really drawn to the colors and the people swimming and the little rafts that were around all of the reefs there. It's a really great uh, pop of color on that stone wall, given that the rest of the room is that really like teal saturated blue. Uh, the color is actually blue ground by Pharaoh and Ball and loved it so much. I did it on the walls, trim and ceiling to make it feel kind of like a giant fishbowl in here. Um, you are on display a little bit with all of the windows, but our neighbors are a little bit further away from us so no one can really see in. Um, so I chose to leave the windows naked so that I could see all of the trees um, and everything green outside of them and really enjoy that rather than covering them up for the off chance that one person might peek in here when they're delivering a piece of mail. So this room was a little tricky to decorate because it's super long um, and I also needed seating in here, which it was a little tricky with the narrowness of the room. So we kind of divided it into two spaces separated by these doors to the living room. Um, this space over here is actually where my husband kind of sits more because the sofa is quite large and long and he's a tall fellow so he can lounge here. Um, and then this side over here is my side where the animals tend to hang out and cuddle. Um, so we broke it out, but still wanted it to be a space where like everyone could get together and read. And then um, we're working on some outside projects right now. But the idea is that if we have people over outside, we open this space up and it's not truly an indoor outdoor room, but it's a little bit more casual than the living room. Play around a little bit more and um, have dual entertaining spaces. I get asked a lot how I would describe my personal style, which is definitely most reflected in my own home as opposed to clients projects where we try to bring their style in. Um, artfully bold, um, eclectically curated, um, British eccentric is another way that I've recently learned to describe it as I've traveled to London and found some antiques that I like there and realized that maybe all along I've been collecting similar pieces for the home. 
so I will show you the powder room, but first I'll show you my cat's bathroom, which is this little hobbit hole under the stairs just to keep it real. A little unsightly, so we can close the door, but um, we hide our litter boxes under there. But in our powder room, we've got a really great um, long space here. So it's not too tiny like a powder room would be, but it's small enough, it's not a full bath. Um, we have the original sink that um, was left for us, which is fantastic because not only is it really gorgeous, but finding a corner sink that fit perfectly would probably be a very hard bill. Um, so we kept the original sink. We wallpapered with this really great twall toilet wallpaper for a cheeky little twist on a powder room. These are really ornate toilets, but we're not ornate people. And the twall is a historic nod, but it's toilets, so it's kind of funny. Um, above on the ceiling, we have these great um, light fixtures that I picked up in Brimfield um, for quite a steal. Two of them flank the ceiling really nicely. And then we retiled the floor and put down a vintage rug, but it's it's not a fussy space, but um, it is really nice to have on the first floor um, and have a little cheeky nod to history and also the fact that it's just a powder room. Welcome to the dining room. This is actually one of my favorite rooms in the house. Love hosting dinner parties. I want people to be comfortable and have the most fun time having conversations. Uh, this room, I wanted to actually keep it a little cozy. So we didn't raise the ceiling in here. We wanted to make it still look like super moody and dark, um, candle lit whenever we're doing our dinner parties. Um, this is actually one of my most, um, like one of the most special walls in the house. I love layering the grass cloth with all these paintings that have a little meaning um, and different history to it. So one of my favorite things is actually this golden egg. Um, this is actually the centerpiece for our golden egg dinner party. It actually holds your flatware and we have a different theme every month for our golden egg. So it sits six, everyone has to bring a different course and we change it every month. So for example, for September, it's Mexican independence. So we do Mexican theme food. For November, we do a Thanksgiving dinner. For December, we'll do a little Christmas. But we change it up every month and it's always the same group of people. The golden egg is always a centerpiece and I just do the flower arrangements and the candle depending on the theme. My favorite drink is tequila and soda. So clearly this is the tequila mezcal side. That is what we mix every weekend with just a little Topo Chico, not even lime or lemon, just straight up. Uh, and this is kind of like for the rest of the people that come over. These are actually tequilas too, but clearly that's the influence that we like serving. Um, this is just an easy bar. I love having the bar in the dining room so that when you're like having dinner, we can just serve straight. You don't have to get up to go to the kitchen. Um, there's a couple pieces that are kind of meaningful. This actually came from my partner, Mason. He's had that piece for a long time. I thought it was kind of like fun with a the question theme, Ralph Lauren look. Um, I also love monkeys, as I've mentioned. So having a little monkey in every room is kind of like a little special and kind of fun to just have it just peeking and having a little cigarette while you're having dinner. Um, the ceiling in this room is actually one of my favorite things. Uh, this was painted by Ashley Braithwaite. Uh, she used 18 pencils to do it. Uh, and it's kind of fun because as you walk around, when you walk in, you see kind of one side of the clouds, but when you go to the other side, it kind of like changes. And at night, it kind of glows a little different. So it's a really fun effect that she created. It's all pencil lines that she worked on. Yeah, she was here for almost two weeks, just doing little lines all over the ceiling. She had to get a really good massage after. <laughs> But it's a super fun effect. I feel like people, when you're sitting at the table, it's kind of fun to look up and just look at the clouds. My favorite thing about the room is that we could fit a round table. I love having a round table because it's just like so easy for conversation. When it's a long table, I feel like communication gets a little lost between the two sides. With this, it's just one single table, one single round. There's no head of the table or special seats other than the couch. The couch is definitely a little more comfortable than the seats, but still, it's still a round table, so everyone has the same opportunity to have a conversation. And you can hear each other. Um, anytime that I can do a round table at a project, that's what I like pushing for. I think dark colors on the wall is actually kind of like a lost myth that if it's dark, the room is going to feel smaller. Um, yes, it's going to make it moodier, but it's not going to make it feel the size different. It's actually all about the lighting. So even painting your walls or doing a 
gra uh, black grass cloth like this room, like it actually makes it even kind of go a little bit deeper out. And it's just kind of like the art kind of floating, which makes it even bigger. Um, it's all about the lighting and like, of course, the look they're wanting to go for. For this room, I would definitely wanted to create it a little bit moodier and darker and like where you feel a little bit more comfortable. That is actually a painting of the French Revolution. My grandmother's French. So when I found this at an antique shop, I was like, I need to take that and that should go somewhere else special. Uh, it actually hang in my powder bathroom in my last place for the longest time and people had the longest conversations about like the nicest piece in my house being in the powder bath. And now of course it's in the dining room. It's kind of like everyone's having a dinner at this place. It's kind of connection with the dining area. Uh, it was just kind of fun to kind of bring some of the French inspiration from like a family, you know, style heirloom kind of thing. So. And it's right next to the lobster. Right next to the French lobster. <laughs> which is, I found that around to last year, uh, one of my best friends and I went together and he was obsessed with the lobster and I was like, I'm just gonna buy it because I don't know, it's just fun. But it actually fit perfect in the dining room. I was like, perfect, kind of like dinner theme. So, and it's a fun pop of color that I was not expecting it was gonna work in this room. Those pieces of art are always like, some people wanted to design a room around their piece of art. Some people kind of like, are oh, they upset, like design a room and then the art will find its place. This is kind of like one of those that it was like the last piece that found its little corner and kind of added a little color. Another one of my favorite collections is uh, these spies. They were actually a gift from a client. Uh, they're the Vanity Fair spies. Each one is uh, a different gentleman and it actually has the history in the back of what they did or what their profession was. Uh, there's a lot of different versions of them. These were actually a gift and they're one of my favorite pieces. Um, I love that they each one is kind of looking a different way. It kind of creates a little bit of a different mood and like they're either staring at you at the table or they're like talking about you kind of like behind your back kind of thing. So those are kind of fun pieces. Um, I love doing the sofa in the dining room. I feel like it's kind of like a special place, but also I kind of wanted to add a different fabric and a different shape that it didn't just feel like a collection of chairs. I kind of like adding that extra like feeling and like um, color just to make it a little bit different and not just like a you bought the set uh, you know as this eight chairs and that's all matching ah, I call myself a collected maximalist so we love layers we love having a lot of items that have stories uh, we love traveling so every time that we go somewhere new we try to bring something that kind of reminds us of our trips um, we also love combining our home heirlooms. So every single piece that has something from our family that means something, we put it out just to like kind of remind us of where we come from. Okay, so this is the kitchen. This is one of the biggest transformations in the house. Uh, this was actually done a couple years after we moved in because I just wanted to understand what the layout and the functionality of the kitchen needed to be. Um, mainly, the um, we wanted to center the stove and make the windows kind of like focal points. The stove used to be to the side, the sink used to be kind of like in an awkward position. So we actually made the windows bigger, created a little sink area, center the stove and make this tile and built in. It's kind of like the focal point. Um, with the kitchen, again, I didn't want it to look just like a brand new kitchen. I still wanted to bring some of the character of the original house. So that's why I wanted to do kind of like a different shape on the built-ins, not just kind of like all squared out and add a little bit of like natural tones with the brass suit for it to look like it belonged to the original house. This is kind of like a little island. This kitchen, as much as would be fun to cook in it, it's actually just for prepping and making, making drinks. <laughs> Um, but we, as you know, the center of the house is always the kitchen. So we love having our friends just kind of like coming around and we want it to be a little bit bigger so that people just like surround the island and hang out while we're just prepping the catering food. <laughs> um, originally this side was actually just pantry slash, um, washer and dryer. And we wanted to incorporate this kind of like as part of the kitchen. So kind of give it a little bit more of an easier flow with the hallway. So speaking of catering, we host the Friendsgiving once a year with about 30 people. Almost every single piece of that um, catering is actually cooked by someone else. We don't usually do anything. Um, but same with the holidays, we throw a Christmas party and we do chicken fingers from Cane's. If you're from Texas or 
Mississippi, you'll understand Cane's is the best chicken with the cane sauce. And we'll just do towers of Cane's chicken here in the uh, island in the kitchen and in the office. So people can kind of walk around and like um, have food as they're drinking and enjoying the carolers. All the sauces are in um, gravy boats. To kind of dress it up, you still need to like make it special during the holidays. So gravy boats and silver platters, everything served to the nines just to make it look a little more holiday friendly and special. Another one of my favorite things is actually having the bigger windows and be able to look out of the pool in the renovated backyard. Um, when we're having a party, it's kind of fun to see if anyone needs drinks or if we need to like be bringing anything out just to kind of like enjoy the view. We'll go see the bedrooms, but we'll go to the backyard in a little bit. The lighting is actually super special. It came from a French elementary school. This antique dealer in McKinney found it. They had a set of three. I wish I could have fit all three, but there's only space for one and it's one of my favorite things in the house. So even though I don't like to cook, I love hosting dinner parties. So this is the glassware collection. So setting up different themes for our dinner parties. And this is all the china and um, plates for all the times that we have people over for dinner. So you have many themes. Yes, I mean, we host at least one dinner party a month and I don't think I've set the same table twice. Um, these actually came from Target. I'm obsessed with them and this is actually our next dinner party theme. Uh, we're gonna do a Mexican Dia de los Muertos idea. So this is gonna go with all the terracotta colors. Super excited about the shape. I thought it was super different. So same as high and low, I love combining all the new. So this is my grandmother's china, and I love combining with kind of updated um, chargers or glassware. It's kind of fun to have a different combination of patterns on your table. So that's kind of fun to bring a little bit of history with some of the new, even a target find. We did so much to this house, and my husband is a contractor, so we both love the romance of a derelict uh, rundown um, place. But we also both, I think, have a very similar vision of what we think, what we know things can be. So when we first uh, saw this place, um, everything was really dark. Weird blue carpet everywhere. The walls were navy. It was a very, very dark house. Um, and there was uh, wood, a lot, a lot of natural wood. And when we when we saw it, we knew in both immediately what we wanted to do. We wanted it to feel like a garden inside and we wanted to paint everything white. My husband's a big, let's paint everything white. And I knew I wanted to really make it, um, I really wanted it to feel colorful and optimistic and modern. I didn't want it to feel a little bit sort of like an old English estate. I didn't want that feel. Um, and so we moved really quickly. Um, my husband's guys came in and, you know, within two weeks, pretty much floors were sanded, paint, blah, blah, blah. We'd ripped things out and changed things around. But fundamentally, the structure of the house stayed the same. Most of what we did was cosmetic. Well, new kitchen, new bathrooms, I guess that, yeah, there was a lot of work. But, um, and he said to me, the electrician's coming tomorrow. Have you picked your lights? And I was like, no. So I was running to open light stores, you know, nearby, trying to find something. Um, so we moved quickly. And that was, that was nice. So I was born in the Philippines. I grew up in Hong Kong. I went to school in England. And then I moved to New York, worked in New York, um, and also worked a lot in India as well, um, traveling to India multiple times for months on end. So I think I have such a global view of the world. I feel like all these visual elements have distilled themselves into my brain. And when I'm designing now, I really pull from that. I, I do very little kind of academic research. I really am looking into myself and reflecting on the things I've seen and um, pulling all those different influences into my work. So I loved the bling of Hong Kong and the gold in Hong Kong. I love the textiles and the amazing color in India. I love now being in um, Connecticut and having my garden be a huge influence on my work. And um, obviously city living both in Hong Kong and New York, um, that sort of hard edged glamour is, is how I imagine those cities. And I always think of that too when I'm designing. So this is our reading room and it's actually our children that named it this because when we moved into this house we weren't sure what this space was going to be used for 
and um, very, very initially, both children found this the room that they wanted to sit and read in. And so as my husband and I were encouraging every form of reading, we were like, go for it. We're going to call it the reading room. And so the name has kind of stuck. And what I like about it is that there's no TV in here. It's very quiet. It's got beautiful light. And um, we've got some really cool vintage um, library carts that we use um, for our books, which we've out completely outgrown now. So we need to find more vintage library carts for that. Um, we've got a brilliant old um, fireplace here. It doesn't work. So we filled it with kind of plants and color, which I love. And then we painted everything white, um, the high gloss white when we moved in. It was, as I said, it was really dark. There was a lot of dark wood. Um, and I love just taking these really old distressed beams and painting them high gloss. I think it's so fresh looking. Some of my favorite pieces of furniture are in here. These are vintage chairs that um, we picked up at flea markets and then we lacquered them in these really, thin, this one we lacquered in this fabulous um, sort of semi uh, gloss turquoise and then did the upholster upholstering to match, which I love. And then this one is so cool. I had this um, piece of vintage um, Indian fabric from my travels. And I loved the idea of taking a very sort of traditional preppy cane chair and upholstering it in um, beautiful Indian textiles. And then this is a funny piece. My husband is um, a big lover of quirky things. It's actually a coffee table made from skateboards. So it's, I love the mix of all of these kind of funny bits in here. Um, this is um, a cabinet that I had from my apartment in London. I got that at one of the, I think Portobello Market or something, and I had the glass top cut for it. And I love all these things on top. They're just so, it's an, um, an eclectic mix. This is such a, this I think sums me up probably because this is, it should have a very traditional kind of Roman bust on the top of this marble pedestal, but I love it with the Buddha on top. So I think that juxt juxtaposition of classical and slightly hippie Indian Eastern vibe, it just, to me that, I just love what this stands for. Nothing too as it should be. Um, we've got beautiful light in this room, as you can see, and the windows look out onto um, some of the back garden and this really cool gold glass ball that we bought at a vintage shop in Connecticut that actually belonged to, what's the name of the producer with the red hair? Ron Howard. So Ron Howard used to have an estate in Connecticut and apparently chuck, you know, sold it all off and we bought his beautiful gold ball. And as we go through the house, you will see I love, love, love round things and I love um, balls in all different sort of iterations. So I love, love, love this room and everyone who comes in here is firstly just like, oh my God, I can't believe you made such a bold choice with the wallpaper, which we'll see. But I think to me it is absolutely the garden inside. And then this was something, um, the fireplace that we put in when we moved in, there was the weirdest fireplace um, or, and mantelpiece, mantelpiece that didn't have a shelf. And I was like, oh my God, that's the ultimate accessorizing opportunity is a shelf above a fireplace. So we bought this fireplace, I think from somewhere like Home Depot, but then used um, the English Paints of Europe paint to get, the, get this amazing green color. Um, these are all mirrors that I've collected um, over the years from London, actually mostly London and some New York. And then these are, pieces that Brad and I both, we literally always fall in love with the same thing and each other. Oh my God. <laughs> um, but we saw these um, gold pine cones and just loved them. And then this is um, one of Brad's old pieces. God knows who this guy is, but um, he's kind of cool up here. And I just love the mixing of the gold and the silver. I love all the different textures on here. And I work really hard to keep the plants alive because it is not easy. Um, this is actually something that Brad found on the street. Um, and I think it's so pretty. Again, the balls, the round things. Um, and I love this. It's a vintage one. We had it rewired, so it's really cool. And then over in this corner, we have, um, this is actually a garden table that um, we brought inside. Um, and I just, we collected these funny things on here. These are Hubble telescopes, apparently. 
Um, and I think both of, we, we saw them and I think we got completely scammed because they were so expensive and we were like, you know what, we didn't really need to buy the Hubble telescope to have um, in our house, but it's a good story. But we bought them before we had kids and we were sort of, you know, had money to spend on things like that. This is a cool um, lamp that I found actually in Brad's garage before we got married. And then I had this um, bronze, um, brass lampshade uh, made for it. And so many people come in and they're like, oh my God, where can I get a brass lampshade made? And the place that I had it made in the city has gone out of business, so it's not there anymore, which is a shame. Um, and then, oh, more balls over here in this corner. Oh, and this is actually, um, this is one of my trays from the new collection. And I always like to put things that I've designed into the house to see if they work, if the colors work, because my collection is very much an expression of my personal aesthetic, obviously. And so if things work in the house, then they're probably gonna work in the collection. So I love this new ECAT tray, and I love the play of the ECAT with the stripe. So this is another uh, piece that people seem to love when they come into the house. It's um, designer guild fabric on, I think it's a Mitchell Gold Ottoman. Um, and it has really withstood the test of time and children and a lot of children jumping up and down on it. So I would say to people, don't be scared of using velvet and precious fabrics because sometimes they really are just completely fine. Um, in this corner, I've got my little collection of balls. So these are some of my glass balls that um, I've collected over the years. And just, I also love glass. Um, I just love the way it takes color. I love the translucent um, aspect of it. And I love playing that against this vintage mirror again with the circles. This is a piece that I bought in a market and then I painted it gold and kind of distressed it. And I've had this with me for such a long time. Um, I also love to have lots of textiles around. So we always have um, Indian quilts and I've got a lovely cashmere um, throw there so that when you're watching TV, you can, there's always tons of, we call them tuckles, to kind of snuggle in with and um, just get really kind of cozy with. So um, we bought these lights at a vintage store um, and they're a pair, but a kind of mismatched pair. So we have one here and one over there, but we made them a proper pair by having the matching shades made in the black um, gloss. And then actually, this is another street find. So um, it was funny as I was kind of going through the house thinking about what I was going to say, I was like, oh my God, all of our furniture is from the street. Um, but this was another street find that we just painted black. It's one of those vintage um, magazine kind of racks, but I love it in here because it's kind of light and airy and it doesn't take up too much space. So my design aesthetic for this house is pretty much my design aesthetic for life, kind of how I live my life. And there's been some people out there who have been a little critical of my more is more mentality, kind of in an Iris Apple sense, like more is more, less is a bore. Um, but, you know, never in the sense of it being kitsch or over the top. Um, but really, I gravitate towards things that I like and that bring me joy, not to, you know, get all Marie Kondo because I'm the exact opposite of Marie Kondo in terms of my design aesthetic. Um, but with this, I wanted each and every room to kind of have its own identity and be autonomous. And I know that there's so many people out there, particularly interior designers or people who are designing their own homes who believe that every single thing should match and every little detail from room to room, you need to have this color story. But your home is a, a living, breathing testament of who you are as a person. So if you like it, it's you and it belongs in your home. I think in terms of this home, what I just gravitated towards were really, really rich colors, patterns, textures, and we wanted our home to be lived in. So if you see along the way cat scratches or perhaps somewhere it looks like a little Cabernet was spilled, it's because we really like to live in our home. Um, we're not the people to put plastic on the furniture or tell you you can't come into a certain room. So before moving into this house, again, most people thought the land was worth more than the house, um, which is probably true. We're actually, uh, located on a parcel of land that behind us is forever wild. So the Autobahn Society, you actually can't build on it. So when you pull up our driveway, it's kind of like uh, pulling into a scene of a Disney movie where all the animals and critters come out and you have uh, 
birds everywhere. Um, but the inside of the house, um, I mean, it was tragic um, to say the least. Uh, it really, again, not a stitch of molding, linoleum. Um, actually, this house was infested with bees, which I'd love to get into that story a little bit later. But there was a push uh, by one family member to call this the honey bee house. Um, but I let them know affectionately that we are not Mount Vernon um, and we can't give our house a name. Pretty much every single thing in here is new, but new in the sense of that it's old. We have the foyer and then we also have the vestibule and the vestibule is actually, again, the entrance to the home. With the center hall colonial, the back of the house is the front of the house, the front of the house is the back of the house. A little confusing, but this is where we actually welcome our guests. So when they first enter, what you're greeted with are these amazing Gournay panels. And these actually are from a house downstate and they were painstakingly removed. And then I had them put on wood panels and then boxed in. So I had an amazing carpenter who was able to do this for me and build out all the paneling. Um, but one of the coolest things about this house that was not cool at the time, but in retrospect is an amazing story. For any of you who do not know, um, there are quite a few now endangered insects and I, I think bees fall under that category. Monarch butterflies were just added to the list, but um, bees are actually now considered endangered. And when we started the renovation of this house, we decided to rip open so I could put up this nice vintage chandelier I had found at an antique store. We had to open up for the wiring and what there was in there was over 40,000 bees. So we had to have them humanely removed. That's actually a whole process. It's illegal to not humanely remove bees. And they were transported to a very, very nice home. But as an ode to the bees, what I decided to do was wallpaper the ceiling. As I said, it's the fifth wall with this gorgeous Pharaoh and Ball wallpaper that played on the blue from the Gournay panels. So this little area, again, is where our guests first come in and then they can enter into the foyer um, and just spend some time in our foyer and marvel at all of the art. However, again, the bees were a nightmare, but they've inspired so much throughout our home. Um, again, Schumacher has done some amazing prints with bees. Um, but we thought it was great for them to be, again, when the wallpaper hanger came and spoke to me, he said, Hollis, would you like the bees to be facing outward or the other way? And technically, as this is the front door, I had him line it so that they were flying out because we really do not want them to come back. And now I'm gonna take you to one of my favorite rooms, which is also one of the smallest rooms in this house. So welcome to my jewel box. That's what I affectionately call this powder room and pretty much every powder room that I do. As an interior designer, everyone always asks me, what's your favorite room to do? And I say a powder room. And it's really because it is one of the only rooms in the home, aside from your main rooms for entertaining, that a guest gets to see. Uh, so I always like to put on a little bit of a show and this for me is quite the show. Um, this wallpaper is Dara by Emmanuel Canova and I saw this wallpaper and I knew that I had to do it and I wanted to do a black bathroom and everyone thought that was absolute insanity and I said no I want black lacquer and I want this black wallpaper. So for this bathroom, the first thing that I chose was of course the wallpaper and then the basket weave marble flooring. I did these flowers myself. I just feel like they're so, so, so happy. And one of the last things that I did was I put grass cloth on the ceiling. This is a really cool shades of light um, fixture that really is this nice canopy. And I decided that I wanted to add that one textural element. So there were so many colors to play off of, but the green seemed to me to be the happiest and the best. Let's take a look inside. 
so this house was built in 1890s, we think uh, late 1890s. Um, it is a traditional brownstone. Well, I am from New Orleans originally. And I'm um, from Las Vegas. So we're both from, you know, pretty much the only two cities where you can walk down the street with a cocktail in your hand. <laughs> we met online and we met a year before we bought this house together, which was a risk and my parents definitely thought it was, was crazy. Was it even a year? It may have been under, your, under a year. Actually, I think you're right. right? Uh, yeah, but uh, it was a risk. <laughs> and it's working out for us. The second day we took a bike ride throughout Brooklyn and we discovered we both shared a mutual passion about brownstone architecture. There was a lot of work done to this place when we got it. Uh, it was a five bedroom and we converted it into a space that would work for our needs. So we turned it into a three bedroom with an office. They also had bedrooms kind of everywhere. Yeah. Like there was a bed, like they really went all out with like making sure there were as many bedrooms. So the kitchen was like kind of jammed into the middle right here. And there's a bedroom in the back and that shouldn't be there so uh, we sort of uh, made this the living and dining floor and all the bedrooms are upstairs. We are project managers for historic home renovations so we particularly do the brownstones. This all started through our own renovation and we blogged a bit about our entire experience of renovation and it became quite popular in the Brooklyn community so we kind of had a conversation together and we at said do we want to do this professionally and sure enough it was something that we were both very passionate about so we took the leap of faith and um we're making it work so this is the parlor floor of our brownstones the main living area and this is where we spend a lot of our time this is where we you know eat work this is where we bring clients to talk about <laughs> tile yeah. samples. We're TV people, so we had, you know, we just went back and forth if we should put our living in the middle yeah. or in the front of the space. Uh, brownstones are very long and narrow, so ultimately we decided that the TV was important for us. So we decided to do living in the middle and then put our dining up in the front. But we really love it because you have the natural light in the front and then this kind of gives us a really nice space between the kitchen and the dining. So you totally gutted the place. Pretty much. I mean, we we know we were. Barry stored. says we didn't gut it, but we gutted the place. <laughs> it was a lot of work, but we like you know we like to say we restored a lot of stuff. I love the historical aspects in here. So the plaster moldings, I just think they're really special. Yeah, I'm laughing because sometimes I look over on the couch at Barry and I'm like, what are you looking at? Yeah. And he's just like <laughs> smiling and wait, gazing up into the plaster molding. I'm like, oh. It's Admiring the yeah. again. I mean, you know, it's kind of amazing just to be like hanging out on your couch and having this around you. It's you cute. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that we really wanted to do that was important to us was obviously to restore the original features that were in the house. But unfortunately, our house had a lot of original features removed before we bought it. And one of the things that were removed were every single fireplace. There probably originally was at least four fireplaces and every single one of them were gone. So we wanted to add one back in. So we got this marble fireplace mantle. You know, we love that we were able to contribute something back into the house yeah. after it was removed. And there's so many different salvage yards around New York uh, that have these incredible marble fireplaces. And most of the time people don't know they're marble because they're covered in layers and layers of paint. Yeah. And it's something so easy and something that anyone can do is just remove all the paint from the marble fireplaces. So this blue bad boy has been with me for a very long time. And when I first moved to New York, I found this blank canvas on the streets of Prospect Heights. And I picked it up because I knew one day I was gonna make an art project and I sure did. This, believe it or not, folks, is from egg crates, and I just cut them to different sizes, and I glue them on here in a pattern, and then I added some hot glue to it. I think it's the perfect piece for the space. So this light fixture is one of our favorite pieces that we have. Um, it's actually made from reclaimed wood from water towers on the top of buildings in Brooklyn. Uh, it's from a company called Stickball. What's been the most fulfilling about this particular project? Ooh, that's a great question. I would say the wood stripping. Um, just our, our original goal with all the woodwork in here was stripping the wood, which took us forever, but we were just gonna repaint it just so you get a nice clean layer of paint. But we saw all the original wood and it was just so beautiful in the space yeah. that we decided to keep it natural and just add a nice tongue oil to keep it as matte as possible. So let's head inside the kitchen. 
So this is where we are with all of our friends all the time. This is where everyone just comes right here, lines up. We all we have you know food out and Shark drinks. And, and yeah, and we it like really. To do it up. We did have to take a wall down here. There was a bathroom Very here. Hard. There was a wall. There was a little hallway. There was a closet over here. So there were lots of walls that came down to make this possible. We also had to put up a beam, um, but we we love it. it. Was worth the effort to get this kind of like open feel. Uh, for the space. So our stairs are original to the house and they're very squeaky. We actually call them our alarm system because if anyone tries to creep up them at night, we will know. They're not getting past this. <laughs> <laughs> this is our bedroom and one of the biggest challenges in New York City is closet space. And we knew we weren't going to get our dream walk-in closet, but we built a his and his. Um, and it's really nice mix of shelves and uh, clothes racks, so it hangs all of our shirts. Jordan's side is the cleaner side. That is my side, the cleaner <laughs> one. And um, they're equal in size. They're, they're equal. In they're size. identical, actually. They not, they are totally identical. We did the exact same thing, so no one can claim someone has more closet space. How would you describe sort of your overall design style? That's a really good question, and I, I mean. I think our design style differs in a lot of ways. Like Jordan likes like a lot of really colorful things. I like a lot of neutral colors and grays. I like tint. I want to paint everything gray. All tiles should Barry be gray. Barry would only have two colors if it were allowed. He would have a charcoal gray yeah, and would. an off-white. And those would be the colors that yeah. you would see throughout the entire home. Like our bed. I, like yeah. our bed. Or I, I would have painted this wall charcoal gray. I love Jordan. a pop of color. You'll notice a lot of pinks throughout the home and a, a bright blue, for example, and that's all my design. But together, I would say the thing that we both love, anything mid-century modern, 100% sign us up for. So one thing that we had in our home when we moved here was an Ikea tabletop hanging out in our basement. And it stuck with us throughout the entire renovation. And after we moved in, we had kind of space between our bump out here and Barry and I decided that we were going to make a DIY shelf system. So we took the tabletop, we cut it different sizes, we stained the wood, and then we inserted them right here in the left of the nook. And now we have this beautiful open shelf on the side of my bed. So let's go in the bedroom that almost gave Barry a heart attack. And you'll know why real fast, because of all this color. There's so much color in here, but it looks amazing. One of the first things that you might notice is that there isn't a window in this room. The skylight makes it the brightest room in the house, which is great, but it still needed a view. And so we put the view on the wall. <laughs> yeah, and I used to work at an ice cream company helping them build out the scoop shops, and I worked with this amazing artist there. Her name's Lauren Kalen, and she did all of the murals for all the ice cream shops, and I was just so fascinated with all of her artwork. So I asked her, I was like, Lauren, would you mind doing a piece of art on our walls here in the home? And we left. Three hours later, we came back and we told her that we wanted something vintage, something botanical. We came back to this masterpiece and she just really took our vision, brought it to life. And it really is just the brightest and most joyous thing in our house. And we love it. So this is, this was, and it still is, an Ikea dresser. And it was like your very average, plain, inexpensive dresser that you get from Ikea. And uh, what we did, we just, we, we hacked it and we made it into something a little more interesting. So we cut out these middle panels here and we put in this molding and we put in this uh, rattan webbing, um, painted it this kind of like light blue color and put this new hardware on. So it kind of gave it a little bit of a new life. So there were two things in our basement when we moved in and that was the Ikea tabletop from the shelves in our bedroom and this orange chair. I think this chair is just perfect in the garden room as we like to call it. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.